This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. It's such a pleasure for me to share with you the information in this program, how to get what you want and want what you have. I started teaching this material 30 years ago. My first talk was developing your full mental potential. I had become a meditation teacher. And I remember giving that talk. I was so nervous. I was so anxious. Huge anxiety. Heart was beating. Heart was beating. My knees started rattling. Really, they started moving involuntarily back and forth. And I stood up to give my talk, and I fainted. <laughs> Everybody thought I had died. <laughs> Here, this young guy was starting out his career to teach how to develop your full mental potential. <laughs> well, I had to learn some other things as well, which was how to overcome anxiety. I believe there's a lot of blocks to being successful. And part of this program is to be able to identify blocks, what your blocks are, take responsibility for them, and learn how to let go of them. And that's where success comes. And what I ask you to open your minds to in this whole program, it's a very simple concept that has been around since history records. And the concept is real simple. It's been described in many different ways. It's been misinterpreted in many different ways. It's been abused in many different ways. It's been misused in many different ways. And what is that? It's a concept that you're not alone in this universe. It's a concept that we live in this plane where we see everything and there are forces that exist that we don't see. And when we open our hearts and our minds to the possibility that whenever I need help, it will be there, it has a chance to be there. Miracles are possible and they happen all the time. We just don't notice them and often we don't give ourselves a chance to notice them. For example, my wife will often say I'm the luckiest man in the world. If you look at my life, amazing things have happened. I've paid the prices along the way, but still, I'm a lucky guy. But part of it is I have a gift that my mother gave me. And the gift since I was a child is she always told me, John, no matter what, you always get what you need. God always provides. may not always be what you want. may not be when you want it, but you always get what you need. And that was what I grew up in, complete trust that everything turns out. And her life was that way. Everything came to her. She was happy, fulfilled, successful. I was very fortunate to have that kind of message. So I grew up in an environment with a belief that you always get what you need. When you don't have that belief, then you think you have to do it yourself. And that's one of the big causes of all these blocks, is that you think you have to do it yourself. This would be my example. Imagine you've got this fantastic new car. It will drive you anywhere. What you do is you get into the car, you've got the keys, you got the map, you know where you want to go, you start up the car, you're ready to go. And then you open the door and get out, and you start pushing. <laughs> Whenever you struggle in life, it's because you've forgotten that there's help. Help will not come unless you ask. You always have to ask. If you don't ask, it doesn't come. It's just like a child. At a certain point, your children are growing up. You let them do their own thing until they need help, and they ask. At a certain age, you don't, they don't have to ask. But at a certain level of maturity, you give them independence. Because they want to do it themselves. There's things I can do. When life is fluid and flowing, I like doing it myself. I did this. I write all my books. I do it. Nobody else does it. I work hard. I accomplish. I achieve. But when things cause anxiety or stress or anger or whatever, please take this away. Please help me. Give me inspiration. Give me wisdom. Give me peace. Help me to love. Help me to forgive. Help me. I really, really need your help. This is the source of miracles. This is what happens in people's lives. You see lots of people, their lives go way up. When their lives go up, I'm so great. Look what I've done. I'm driving my car. I've handled this. I'm the top not expert on this. And then what happens? Pride cometh before the fall. When they fall, they get humbled. Oh, gosh, my life's a mess. I blew it. I made mistakes. I was extravagant. I hurt this person. I feel terrible. You know, you basically hit bottom. And some people who, when they hit bottom, if they then ask, please help, I'll, I'll learn my lesson, I'll do it differently, the help comes and you rise back up. So you see lots of ups and downs. You see some people just hit down and they stay down. Why? Because they feel like they're bad. 
They feel like they were bad, they misused, they didn't do the right things, and so they don't deserve. And the secret of being successful, getting what you want, and wanting what you have, is to know that you always deserve everything you need and anything you want in your heart. You deserve that too. In a sense, you deserve what you need, but what you want, you have the power within yourself to make that happen. And when you need help, that help will come. Things just aren't done for you. You have to do it. And one of the greatest mysteries is the leap of faith. I can't just sit in my room meditating, thinking, God, help me to write this book. Help me to write this book. Please, give me the courage. Give me the strength. And sit there and meditate, and the book gets written. I've got to then get up and take a step. And then take another step. And just do it. I heard Larry King say the other day, he was just saying on his show, he's a very successful person. Done his, made his, he's doing his dream. He said, 90% of success is just showing up. Just showing up. Just starting. You just got to do it. You know, you just do it. You just do it. You know, people always say, how do you do so much, John? I mean, what, you do this, you do this, you do this. They called, they asked me to do it. Part of me goes, I don't know if I can do that. What, I, what, what am I going to do? I says, sure, I'll do it. And it just comes to me. Now, once I became very trusting of that, then I stopped planning talks. When I go out and give a talk, people say, what are you going to talk about? We'll see. Now, it's not like I just talk randomly. It's been, I've written 12 books. You know, I've been doing this 30 years. You know, I've, But for me to like take 20 minutes to prepare my talk when I've spent 30 years preparing my talk is ridiculous. Not necessary. And part of how I learned to do that was I realized that whenever I did prepare my talks, I never said those things. <laughs> I would just take off and say something else. And gradually, I learned to trust that force, that it would just come through me. But there was a process. You don't just do that until you have that confidence. You literally need the confidence. It's like a, you're relaxed. So to create success, you always, right now in your life, and you always have had everything you needed. Now, you may not think that, but one of the reasons you don't think you have what you need is you weren't able to recognize what you needed. In a sense, what I mean by that is you're a phone call away from what you need. What's, what you need is somewhere available, but maybe somebody hasn't taught you how to find that. Maybe you don't know how to recognize that. Or maybe you're stuck resenting over here. Like, if I'm blaming you for my problems, then what I'm really saying inside, that's a block blame, then I'm saying, I need you to change before I'll feel better. When the reality, why would I look to somebody who's already caused me problems to save me? <laughs> What I could just basically go is, if this is causing problems, then obviously what I need is not over there. Let me look somewhere else and just change the subject. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Let me just go do something else. And it doesn't mean your life's always going to be perfect. Life is about processes and mistakes. Put your energy into creating what you want in your life rather than putting your energy into trying to change somebody who's already disappointed you. Who are you? You're loving. You're compassionate. You're peaceful. You're confident. You're wise. These are all the qualities of your true self. How do you know the qualities of your true self? Whenever you're feeling really good. That's who you are. And when you're not feeling really good, you've now slipped into the false self. You can call it anything, the shadow self, the false self, the non-self, the <laughs> not me self. It's just basically, what does that mean? It means we've all had those experiences where we've been a certain way and afterwards we go, oh, I didn't mean that. That's not who I am. That's right. That's not who you are. If I come home and I'm not getting what I need from my wife, I might overreact and be all upset. Then later on, the next day I go, gosh, 